I'm here today with Team 23268 Ultraviolet New Jersey State Champions. Your intake this season has been very versatile with you being able to score things like 6 plus 0 on uh, the specimen side. Today we're going to go over the robot and today's behind the bot. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Judica Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the USA can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. So our intake here is mounted on horizontal extension slides. Uh, the intake itself uses two axon maxes to pivot the elbow. Uh, this this right here, our intake is mounted on a 360 degree wrist, which I think is the biggest benefit here. Uh, we can pick up specimens in any orientation. Uh, and then we also have a camera mounted here that lets us run uh, AI models and OpenCV, OpenCV pipelines to pick things up. Pretty cool, yeah. So any challenges you guys encountered with your intake or any types of refine, refinements you have to do to get to where it is today? Yeah, so uh, one thing, one big thing with the intake uh, was before it had a really uh, big problem trying to like pick up specimens if they were right next to each other. So like if two were touching each other, it would have a lot of trouble doing that. And so actually what uh, ended up happening, we added a color sensor to center the, uh, it's not here right now, but uh, to center the claw over that specimen, or sample, sorry. And then we changed the programming to close at a certain time uh, that actually basically guarantees we'll get any sample we want, even if they uh, are right next to each other. Awesome, yeah, so now going a little bit into your intake over here. You guys, sorry, your outtake, my bad. Your outtake has linear rails on it. Are these MGN rails, or how did you manage to integrate it, and really what benefits did you see using rails on your outtake? Yeah, so uh, we use uh, the just MGN rails off of Amazon. Um, these uh, help our intake. Uh, do specimen scoring as well as sample scoring. So in the back here, we will uh, score s samples like this, uh, and then we just use a one servo linkage to push it forward, and then it can score specimens from the front. That's pretty cool. Now your wire management is something really unique too. I know so here everything really, you have everything cabled up and sleeved up very nicely. Uh, that's something for teams, a lot of teams to learn from. How did you approach this season? And really, what was the way you did it? Did you do it through CAD, or you spent a lot of time kind of refining it uh, on the table? Yeah, so our wiring uh, was a big priority for us. Uh, we only were able, or sorry, we spent over a week actually wiring the robot, which took even longer than our uh, building the actual robot. And so a big priority for us was the wiring because last year we actually ran into a lot of problems where like, oh, wire unplugged, or this happened, or that happened. And even after spending hours and hours on wiring, we still occasionally had some problems. So we wanted to make sure everything is as clean as possible, no snagging, no problems, and we could just run smoothly. That's pretty cool. So now we're talking a little bit about your drive train. If you want to flip it over real quick, and we'll go into that. So you guys have a combination of live axles and you run it off your, uh, you run it off belts. You guys use a lot of belts, really. How did you come up with this motor packaging? And uh, I also noticed there's kind of a notch in here as well. Like, what's the uh, purpose of that? Yeah, so uh, our motors here, there are uh, six sunk motors uh, to the bottom of the drivetrain, make the center of gravity as low as possible. Uh, we have the cutouts here so that we can put them even lower without even have to worrying about like inserting them. It also lets us drop the motors out and swap them really easily if we need. Uh, we use three belts here to each of the motors, so the right one here is for this wheel, uh, the left one here is for this wheel, and then our center motor goes up to this axle right here that goes through the robot and powers our slides. Yeah, so if we want to go over uh, flipping the robot over now, if we want to go over the transfer and uh, how that works, that'd be awesome. So one unique thing about a transfer is this fork here that we have on our deposit. It helps us uh, pick up specimens from the wall because it allows us to align it perfectly from the wall. Um, it also um, helps us with transfer because when we were transferring originally, we would grab the sample here and then we would bring it over to the deposit clock, but it would just fall through to the bottom. So we have to have some kind of stand or support um, that the sample could uh, rest on. Awesome, yeah. So. 
One more thing. So your programming, especially with the automatic sample on this, is very, very accurate. So how did you get to where you are right now with the amount of accuracy that you're able to produce with your robot? Uh, so it did take a while to fine tune it. Uh, we did actually uh, start with using um, a AI model uh, that we trained with TensorFlow. Uh, but we weren't able to get that fully functional in time. So right now what it uses is OpenCV. Um, we just line it up, find the correct color of the sample, and then find the angle of it, and then turn the claw uh, to the opposite angle so it can pick it up. Um, really just a lot of trial and error. Um, playing around with the different um, variables and constants. That's really cool. So you also have something pretty unique over here. What do you call this? Is this a switchboard or what is it? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what the exact name of these are, but they're basically just wire clips that lets us, uh, what's it called? They let us swap these wires really fast. That was another thing when we took into consideration when creating our wires. Uh, we wanted to make sure every servo on here is easily swappable. So with this up here, all we have to do is if our axon breaks, we grab a new one, put it on, and plug in the three wires, and it's good to go. Thank you. So just coming off the New Jersey State Champions, we have Team 23268 Ultraviolet here. You guys came off an amazing season, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys at Worlds and really seeing what you're able to accomplish. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interests, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. Zutica Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the USA can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots.